Today, I'll be reviewing the Tamron 17-20 f2.8 lens for Sony E-mount cameras. I'll share the main features of the lens, pros of the lens, cons of the lens, the price, and if I recommend that you purchase this lens or save your money. If you're a videographer looking to scale your videography business, more important than any piece of gear is the business and sales knowledge that will help you book more clients and grow your business. In my book, Film to Freedom, I share all the sales skills and strategies that you need to turn your passion for videography into a six-figure income, and I'm giving you a copy for free. Just click the first link in the description below to get a free copy. I've condensed all seven years of my experience growing my videography business to six figures into this book, so click the link in the description to get your free copy. With that, let's jump into the review. The Tamron 17-28mm f2.8 is a wide-angle lens built for the Sony E-mount camera lineup. For those curious, if your Sony camera is an E-mount, you can give your model a quick Google, but to my knowledge, this is going to include all of their recent mirrorless cameras. The Tamron 17-28 f2.8 comes in as an affordable alternative to the Sony FE 12-24 f2.8 at almost a third of the price. Even with this price point, this lens has exceptional low aperture capabilities with a base aperture of f2.8. The focal length of 17 to 20 millimeters allows you to capture a pretty wide angle of view at 17 millimeters, and you also have the flexibility to zoom in up to 28 millimeters. The diameter of the lens thread is 67 millimeters. The body is made mostly of plastic. It has a weather sealing rubber gasket on the mount and the front element has a fluorine coating to repel water and oil and make it easy to clean. Now we're gonna take a look at the sharpness and colors comparing the Tamron 17 to 28 to the Sony 20 millimeter. I've set both these lenses at 20 millimeters so that way it's an equal comparison and all the settings were kept the same as far as aperture, exposure, shutter speed, white balance, everything else was kept the same and I applied the same exact color grade to both lenses as well. That way we can have an equal comparison between the two. So first, let's go ahead and take a look at the overall image here. All right, so we've got the Sony 20 millimeter here and then we've got the Tamron 17 to 28 millimeter. Now, just first impressions, they are very similar. As we bounce back and forth between the two, we can see that they are very similar in color here. The big difference that you'll notice is what appears to be vignetting in the Tamron 17 to 28. When we flip back and forth between the two, along the blue border particularly we can see that the tamron is a bit darker and this does appear to be vignetting as the center appears to be the same so that's the big difference i'm noticing right off the bat between the two outside of that they look very similar now let's take a look at sharpness here in the middle when we compare the two they are very similar i'm not seeing any visible difference in sharpness taking a look at both center points here. But as we take a look at the outside edges, I do see and surprisingly see that there is a difference in sharpness and it appears that the Tamron is actually sharper. If we take a look right here in this little pinwheel right here particularly, we flip back and forth between the two, we can see it appears that the Tamron is actually a little bit sharper. Now this could have been some other variables, maybe there was slight movement in the camera, but just from what I'm seeing here, it does appear that the Tamron is a little bit sharper. So now let's go ahead and take a look at what the two images look like in an interview type setup here. First, we've got the Sony 20 millimeter right here. And then we've got the Tamron 17 to 28. So as we bounce back and forth between the two, once again, we can see the same difference here. The Sony 20 millimeter, especially around the outside, is gonna be a little bit brighter than the Tamron is. We can see that the walls on the Tamron show a little bit darker than the Sony. Outside of that, the images look very similar. A little bit more brightness in the Sony in the center too. But outside of that, the two images look very similar. So as far as colors and sharpness go, it appears that the colors between the Tamron are very comparable to the Sony colors, maybe a little bit more vignetting with the Tamron. As far as sharpness goes, very similar once again, 
maybe even a slight edge to the Tamron on sharpness, but I'm thinking that was probably just a little bit of error due to shakiness or something when I was recording it. So once again, the Tamron very similar to the Sony in regards to sharpness and color. So there's the basics of this lens. Now let's talk about the pros. And let me say, there are a lot. First is the focal length. This lens gives a really nice wide angle view at 17 millimeters. This is gonna be great for capturing beautiful wide angle B-roll. I love capturing wide angle shots of buildings and rooms for corporate projects with this lens and of venues for wedding videography. In addition, you could use this lens for vlogging or shooting pictures of landscapes. You can then zoom in up to 28 millimeters, which gives you a tighter shot. But if you then punch into super APS-C mode, you can turn this all the way into a 42 millimeter focal length, which really extends the reach of the lens. Next is the low aperture of this lens. At f2.8, this lens gives you solid low light capabilities. This can be really helpful when put in dimly lit settings where you don't have full control over the light, such as a dimly lit wedding reception or even ceremony space. Some churches can be fairly dark and to turn your aperture down to f2.8 to brighten the image can be a lifesaver. I've also shot corporate conferences where the conference room is poorly lit and being able to shoot all the way down to f2.8 can save the shot. With this low aperture, you also get really nice depth of field. This provides for that creamy background that can separate the subject from the background and make the image look nice and professional. I'll be honest, I'm a sucker for some nice bokeh and a shot. Next, we've got the build of the lens. It's made of plastic, but it doesn't feel like a cheap plastic. It feels pretty durable. And honestly, it feels like the same material that my Sony G Master lenses are made of. In addition, the lens is incredibly lightweight. It comes in at 437 grams. And for reference, this is slightly less than a standard 17 ounce bottle of water. In addition to the lightweight, we have the small form factor. It's right at four inches in length, which is about three quarters of the length of an iPhone 13. This makes this lens really easy to keep in your bag and shoot with. You don't have to worry about your arms getting tired or your gimbal motors struggling with this lens. On the topic of gimbals, one of my favorite aspects of this lens is the fact that even though this is a zoom lens, it doesn't have an extending barrel. This means that you can change the zoom on this lens without having to rebalance your gimbal. And when you're shooting run and gun projects, such as capturing B-roll for a corporate project or shooting a wedding, this is incredibly handy. The autofocus on this lens is fantastic. As you can see, this lens quickly locks onto faces and does a great job of tracking them throughout the field of view. I found the autofocus on my Tamron lenses to be just as good as my Sony lenses. In addition to the speed of the autofocus, we have the sound, or lack thereof, that this lens makes when it pulls focus. This is a small pro, but I really love when my lenses are silent as they pull focus. It can be helpful when audio is being recorded and you also just don't want your lens making a bunch of noises if it's ever searching for focus. It's important that you know if your camera is searching for focus, but that's not something that you need your client to know as well. The minimum focusing distance for this lens is seven and a half inches, which probably won't be important for you very often, but it is nice to know that you can still get the subject you're shooting in focus at extremely close distances. This could come in handy during some unique shoots. And finally, we have the fact that this is a fixed aperture lens. This means that as you zoom in and zoom out, your aperture is not going to change. This gives you more control over your lens and allows you to shoot at the aperture that you choose no matter the focal length that you're shooting at. As you can see, there are a lot of pros with this lens, but there are a few things that could be cons depending on your needs. First, this lens does not have image stabilization. This means that you're not gonna get any image stabilization from the lens itself. Now, with that being said, the vast majority of Sony E-mount cameras have steady shot, which means you're gonna get in-body image stabilization with most cameras that you would use this lens with anyway. I personally have not had any issues with image stabilization as I've used this lens on the a7 III, a7 IV, and FX3, and all these cameras have in-body image stabilization. With that being said, if you're shooting on a camera such as the a6400 and you're gonna be mobile, I would recommend using a gimbal as you'll be without any image stabilization. The second and final con is the focal length. I know I listed this as a pro earlier, but I'm also putting this in the con section because the minimum focal length of 17 millimeters could be a challenge for some of you depending on what you're using this lens for. 
For example, I personally would not recommend this lens as your primary lens for real estate photography or videography. I shot a few houses with this lens and I found that 17 millimeters just wasn't quite wide enough for me to capture the entirety of some smaller rooms that I shot. I picked up the Lawa 12 millimeter f2.8 lens and that's become my go-to for real estate. If you shoot a lot of real estate and you need a dedicated real estate lens, I would recommend picking up the Lawa 12 millimeter zero distortion lens over the Tamron 17 to 28. With that being said, the Tamron 17 to 28 is a more versatile lens that'll be better for most other shooting purposes. Finally, we have the price of the lens. This lens is currently listed at $799 on Amazon. This is three times less than the cost of the Sony 12 to 24 millimeter f2.8 lens. You're not comparing apples to apples with these lenses given the difference in focal length among some other differences, but $799 is an incredible price for the value that you're getting with this lens. So who would I recommend this lens for? If you're looking for a wide angle lens to add to your collection of lenses, you want a good quality zoom lens, but don't want to break the bank dropping almost three grand, then I would highly recommend picking up this lens. This was my first wide angle zoom that I purchased within the Sony system, and I couldn't have been happier with it. It allowed me to capture beautiful wide angle establishing shots when shooting weddings and corporate projects. I bought this lens after picking up the Tamron 28 to 75 millimeter and having the ability to shoot at f2.8 all the way from 17 millimeters to 75 millimeters provided me with a ton of flexibility. If you want to purchase the lens, you can find a link to it on Amazon in the description below. All the links are affiliate links, so I will receive a small commission for each purchase at no additional cost to you, which keeps the cost the same for you and helps me to make more product reviews for videography gear. And if you want to level up your videography business, click the first link in the description to grab a free copy of my book, Film to Freedom, where I teach all of the strategies that allowed me to turn my passion for videography into a six-figure income. Hit the like button if you found value in this video and hit subscribe for more videography-related content. I'll see you in the next one.